All right, former MTV News reporter Tabitha Sorens with us on Good Day Rochester. Uh, she has a photo exhibit that's been following baseball players uh, for the last 15 years, and she's written a book. It's called Fantasy Life Baseball and the American Dream, and she's talking about that tonight at George Eastman Museum at 6 o'clock. Doors open at 5.30, and uh, you'll get to meet folks who want to meet you and want to talk about the work that you've done in this book. And we were just talking, of course, about being in journalism. <laughs> we're so curious about that, but then we asked you, why baseball? And you had a fascinating answer. Um, these young men in at the time you know they were hoping to get called up you yep, know they, they were, they were, they were, they were all rookies so yeah and I stuck around for 15 years to see how they moved as a human being from baseball stud to whatever they were going to be after baseball because they've been doing this since they were three or four years old not since they got drafted mm -hmm, I mean mm -hmm. one of the guy's fathers put a baseball on the left-hand side of his crib so that he would grow up to be a left-handed pitcher. Oh so God. these are, these are you know, decades of work even before they get to the minor leagues. And so their identity is formed entirely around baseball. And what I thought when I met them, they were so full of hope and purpose that I thought this is a really rare opportunity to have all these people, there were 21 of them that I followed, jump into a particular world at the same time. But really, Fantasy Life became a story about fallibility and how you react when the one thing that has given your life meaning goes away. Mm -hmm. and, and what, they're you know, sometimes 29 years old when this happens, so what are they gonna do? What's the next act? So and because I was emerging in my own second act, I think that's why I related to it as well. Although I didn't think of that until I was done. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, oh, I'm a photographer. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> so for the Basically. mom or dad out there who, you know, has a, you know, a child who is obsessed with baseball and wants to grow up and lead this major league life, and, you know, as we know, often it doesn't turn out, what is the long run outlook for a lot of these players? Well, Where do they I find would themselves say, now? I would say that 6%, that's the number you need to know, 6% of the people who are drafted, not who play in college, not who are the stars of their high school team, who are drafted into professional baseball, make it to the majors. Wow, so that's six. the number parents should keep in their heads. Because Sorry. when I asked Brian Stavisky's parents in Rochester when he was working here post-baseball, I said, did you know the odds were that slim? They said, we didn't want to know. Wow. Because then you're put in the position of dissuading your child from following their dream. Right. And what parent wants to be in that position? Mm -hmm. So I think that many of them are coaches. One coaches for the Padres, another one is the mental fitness skills coach for the Cubs. Wow. There is a minor league coach for the A's in Vermont. One guy went back to coal mining. I mean, there's, a, there's okay. another one who's an insurance salesman. Mark Tian runs a wine bar in Scottsdale and he's a businessman. So, um, it's a wide range of possibilities, but you have to have a certain sense of self to pursue what's going to make you happy, and I think that takes a little while. Yeah. Uh, in one case, Joe Blanton is still playing. Mm -hmm. So he retired because he had fallen out of love with the game. He really, like, was terrible when he played for the California Angels, and he said, enough. And then someone moved in next door, a catcher who needed Joe to throw to him huh. just for practice, yeah. and he started just playing catch again. And he thought, he rediscovered his childhood love for the game, got a tryout with the Pirates, ended up going to the World Series that year with the no. Kansas City Royals. No way. Then played his best season yet last year with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Unbelievable. And now he's on the Washington Nationals. Oh my God, so, what a that's, you know, <laughs> Okay, that trajectory is, is like, it's what? It's resilience. Oh. It's incredible. But I think the idea is that it's, it became less work and more fun for him. That's mm -hmm. what triggered his ability to succeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fascin It's been fascinating just talking to you um, uh, about your love for photography, for your now love for baseball. And I don't really people. love baseball yeah. yet, but really? I love, I love, love the, the idea of pursuing something that people say is out of reach and, and striving for greatness. I mm -hmm. think that's compelling. What's next real quick before we go? I have a whole series that I've been working on about adapting to technological domination. Oh. I'll be showing some of those pictures tonight if okay. anyone's interested. Oh, Six o'clock okay. at George Eastman uh, Museum, the Dryden Theater at 900 East Avenue. Um, come on down and meet Tabitha and, and pick her brain about the book and I'm fascinated. I don't know about, I mean, you're fascinated too. This I think yeah. all, both all of us questions just... are welcome tonight. You all can right. even ask me about Tupac if you would like. <laughs> oh, ah, well, all righty then. That's a tease right there. Was he I'm... dating Madonna? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll ask that later. We'll ask that later. <laughs> yeah, right. How about this tease? More about that wine.